It's another beautiful segment of Daybreak Africa where we ask questions to seek individual opinion on the particular subject matter. I am Bidemi Moses and today we will be talking about insecurity in Nigeria and how we can tackle attack and dry season and also the level of insecurity towards the 2023 election. And my guest today is a public affairs analyst and he's by name Olumide Obanla. It's good to have you on the show this morning, sir. Much, it's nice uh, to it's a pleasure. All right. Uh, without wasting any more time, we are running into dry season gradually, and uh, we shouldn't forget the fact that 2021, 2020, we experienced farmers' headers clash, and now it's another dry season period. Do you think, security-wise, we are prepared to enter into dry season? Well, uh, farmers and headers clash has, almost, has not always been an issue of maybe dry season or not. Has been a consistent thing in, 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 our, in our dear nation where a lot of us need to be scared, a lot of our farmers need to be scared of going to the farms. And uh, sometimes you want to go to the farm and you have the opinion that when I go to the farm, I don't know what I'm going to meet there. You see, to me, I have not always believed that Nigeria is always, or uh, I've always been ready for to tackle insecurity you see eight years ago mr president told us that before it's going to be 100 years 100 days in the office we we're going to tackle insecurity uh but to my greatest supply surprise rather it's over 800 days now it's even about eight years and uh, yes. nothing or such has happened mm -hmm. and um, we are still hopeful and even they told he just told us now that uh, before he leaves the office maybe before february next year we all know that the election is february next year he knows that he, he has told us that before he, he and Suba, that is going to make sure that it's going to hand over a country that is free of insecurity mm -hmm. and as of now i'm expecting them to to have done something which which boils down to the fact that i've always been asking a question what has our security votes being used for by by several state governors that takes this security vote when you ask them they will tell you they take security votes to tackle insecurity in this country but rather it has not been i have i have been i have been a victim of insecurity i can mm -hmm. say it anyway i'm a victim of insecurity my father was coming from um, somewhere sometimes ago in may and he was kidnapped with my younger brother and we parted away with millions of naira just for him to be released mm -hmm. so when you are talking about insecurity i am i i am i've been a victim of it so that you are coming to you see my advice for farmers at this time that dry season is coming is very simple if nigeria cannot tackle insecurity when you see these headers or ex-men on your farmland, rather than arguing with them, or rather than telling them to get away from your farm, just let them be and you leave. No, that's the sad truth. Because you argue with them, they kill you. You do not argue with them, they kill you. So what do you do? And it is very pertinent for you to go to the farm. It's very pertinent for because if our farmers are not allowed to go to farm, we will stay hungry in this country. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes. A lot of us still go to the market to buy yams and the rest. So by the time they destroy most of these crops, how do we get them? So to me, I, I, I don't think we're readily prepared. To All right. This. Uh, you talk about insecurity vote. I will still come down to insecurity vote. But first, uh, when we talk about economy of the nation, uh, we give kudos to the farmers also because they do a lot to ensure that the apple subsidize the price of whatever is coming from another country. But now our farmers facing insecurity and also you saying rather than fighting with the headers, they should just let them be and do whatever they want to do. Are we not running into recession? You see, Nigeria has once witnessed recession, and I am not going to be surprised eh, if we are going to run into it. Mm -hmm. You see, to me, I have always believed on one thing. What have I believed on? Is if we don't do the right thing, eh, we will continue to witness the bad thing. Mm -hmm. Our government needs to tackle insecurity. If the, you see, for me, if farmers today, today in the market, a farmer calls a two-bar of yam 1,500 naira, I am not ready to argue. I will buy. Because number one, I know this farmer has rigged his life to go to the farm to get it. If, all of, if anybody watching me or myself now, my father has a very big farm. Anytime he calls me in the morning and says, my boy, I'm going to the farm. I will keep praying. Even when I'm in the office, I'll be calling him from time to time. Just to check up on Just him. Just to check up on him. Are you fine, sir? What of the workers? Because nobody knows. In a twinkle of an eye, they just turn this around. Hmm. They believe 
They believe the whole country belongs to them. But it is actually not their fault. Why I said a lot of farmers should just keep calm is if you fight them, per venture, if a farmer should overpower them, and the farmer has been arrested, the police is going to charge the, the farmer for manslaughter. Mm -hmm. Have you? But when they kill the farmers and they are being arrested, they are not being charged with, with attempted murder or they are not being charged with manslaughter. So one is, one is above the law. <laughs> and they told us justice is, they, they said justice knows no man. But the headsmen to me, I believe they are above the law. If you see there's a case sometimes ago, I think in the north, where a farmer was able to overpower a certain headsman and the headsman was killed. What happened? The farmer was arrested, Abi, prosecuted yes. for manslaughter. But a lot of S men that have been, even when you ask them now, they will tell you it's not S men that are doing it. Even they will tell you it boils down to the fact that Yoruba is not an X men. So, <laughs> or they tell you I, they are I, from Nigeria. I public. am tired of a lot of things. When I discuss insecurity, it makes me weep deep inside me because I know we have not got. We see now, there are times when I just see Nigeria has just delivered. Uh, a plane that there was a time I saw in news, maybe last month or there, we have the police were trying to test a drone, yeah, a yeah. drone that they can use as a um, weapon. And I asked myself, I said, don't worry. In the next few months, you see that they tell us the drone was missing, it's missing, or the drone was swallowed by a snake, or the drone was affected by rats. And it's no longer that is the situation we are. Some I want somebody will just take the drone and go and sell it again on behalf of the country. <laughs> maybe so. maybe we should just say Nigeria and Animal Kingdom. We are five and six. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let us move on. Uh, looking at the state of insecurity in Nigeria, very recent, the House of Assembly they said something and they were deliberating on what the federal government is doing concerning the uh, concerning the case of insecurity, and they want us to know that the federal government has failed us a whole lot uh when it comes to providing ins uh, providing security for the citizens we have the nscdc we have the police uh, police we have the uh, military personnel and they are doing nothing uh, uh we we all rather agree with them or we should look into the fact that these people are not doing their job right i want to ask and i still tell people when somebody we have elected to represent us in the National Assembly that makes law goes to the National Assembly to sleep. Hmm. And you wake up in the morning and you are saying the federal government has not done what it needs to do. Are you not part of the government? There was a time, there was a time we said they should pass a vote of no confidence on the presidency itself. That they've not done the right, have they done it? Now you, they are now telling us they've not done You see, Shabby, they out, they commit, the, 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 the National Assembly, the legislative arms, have what they call the House Committee on yes. Security. Yes. Abi, we have somebody is the chairman. We have some members are members of that committee. What have they done? What policies have they put in place? It is not just for them to come to TV and start shouting. Even if there are policies that have been put in place, you see, one of the problems we have in this country is not making law. The problem we have is effective execution of the laws and regulations we have made. That is the problem we have. We are very quick into making some certain laws. But we are very opaque in carrying out or in executing those laws. Okay, what has been the law? Okay, the, the Nigerian army, there are times the Nigerian army were shouting. You people said we should go to Boko Haram and do security. You people are not giving us good guns. You're not giving us our allowances. We beg you before you pay us our allowances. We beg you before you pay our salaries. Are the, are, are the legislative and government not right, quite aware of this? Are they not? So to me, the National Assembly should not only be saying the, the, there's a provision in the law that even if they make a law and the presidencies refuse to put to assent to the law, that is the presidential signature, the National Assembly has a duty Yes. Abi, yes. to make it a law without law. the presidential assent after a, a number of period that has presented to Mr. President. That, that shows that if Mr. President is not doing the right thing, I think they can call the security hands, they call the leaders there, they call the chief of army staff, chief of defense staff, and ask them, what are you doing? To me, I do not believe in chief security of the chief CDS. 
I keep asking myself, what has the, the, the national, I think the National Security Advisory Committee or something, NSA or something, what have they been doing? What have they been doing? So, the presidency today will tell you, you never knew uh, fellow Nigerians, I never knew there was something like this. The president? So, it points out that most of our people are just there for their pockets. Selfish reasons. So, I am against that opinion that says the National Assembly are just saying the presidency has not done well. If the presidency has not done well on, on security, security, they should go back and study their legislative functions. Hmm. They know what to do. All right. I, I, I think I will support you on that. All right. Before the launch of the Southwest Security Operatives, which is the Amotekon. Yes, I have the list of some states that has their home personal security operatives. And we have Kaduna State. They have vigilance uh, services. Sokoto, they have Yambango. Mm -hmm. And also, they have Sokoto Cop Masha. Mm -hmm. Kano State, they have Isba, Zamfara. Mm -hmm. They have Ambiani, yeah. Yang Kansia. And also, Bono, they have Civilian Joint Tax Force and many others. Yeah. River State, too, they have security core agent and also uh Ebony state they have neighborhood wa yeah. watch mm. now since the uh since we have amateko in southwest a whole lot of the things have been going on within the presidency uh, the president the presidency approved uh casino state security to bear arms and other states are coming out to talk like the governor of Ondo State, uh, Rotimi Akiridolu, said he will provide ammunition for his uh, for the Amotekon. And also, I think the governor of Niger State, two months ago, he said he's ready to give his security operatives the same ammunition the headsmen and the Boko Alams are using so that they will have the same thing to tackle insecurity in their state. Uh, now, if every state are coming out to do this, should we just say the president, the, the federal government should just scrap please and NSCDC since they are not performing see, their functions well? There were time, there was a time in this country that we all agitated for state policing. Hmm? But federal government did not see reasons with state policing. Policing each state from Abuja is wrong. What I mean by policing this state from Abuja is this. You are posting me, I am from Undo State, I joined the Nigerian Police Force, and you are posting me to Akwa Ibom. What do I know about Akwa Ibom? If there are, what, what is my, what do I know? Where do I know? If there is even any issue in Akwa Ibom, how do I tackle it? What do I know? You see, I want to give kudos to Roti Miyakeyodolu. When he started the issue of Amotekun, if you see, the, the rate at which there are criminal offenses in, in Ondo State now has reduced drastically because Amotekun cops everywhere. They cop everywhere and they are ready to do what they're supposed to do. Why? Do you know why? Because these Amotekun people, they know their local, co local community. Very well. Most of these Amotekun members were maybe former vigilante members or farmers and the rest. Now, they know that. Like this time, that, that, that period I told you about my father's issue, hmm? Amotekun were in the bush. They were combing all the bush from left and right. Even sometimes they had to sleep there. They know those bush. They know everywhere. But the Nigerian police, they will be in there. If I ask the Nigerian police now to come to this area and call for criminals, does he even know where to enter? Maybe number one, because it's, it's, it's from the east. Now, when you keep putting everybody around, to me, yes, policing the national police is good huh? but they should also give room for state policing and i give kudos for to some of these state governors that are coming out to say okay it's as if this the national police is not assisting it's matter mm -hmm. let us have our state security operatives which is assisting them which is assisting them lagos state has its own this whole southwest we're talking about amotekun yeah which they are doing fine but my major problem with the presidency is this very simple why should you make others be at the mercy of others? Hmm. Ishmael and the rest of them bear sophisticated ammunition, AK 47s, right? But now we want to approve, we have been, the state government have been begging, approve ammunition for Amotekun. You have refused. You see, you have made them be, they, some, some states are at the mercy of the other states. So, state security, fine. State policing, perfect and wonderful or should we say because uh, the federal government is trying to look into funding of all these state policing 
apparatus. When you are looking at funding, how my question is, has any state that has its own state security operative, have they ever asked Mr. Pres the presidency for their salaries? This state, these state governors have been paying the state security operators, even though if they are not being sincere with it. I know of Ondo State, that Montecus in Ondo State, if I'm not mistaken, some of them take in 30,000 naira per month. Have you? The, the state government That's is not having, wages. the state government is not asking for that salary from the federal government. I expect that if all state governors are being sincere, with their security votes, they should be able to finance their security operatives every month perfectly. Delta states takes, the government of Delta state takes 2 billion naira every month, if I'm not mistaken, as security, security vote. My state governor here takes 600 million. River states takes about 1.4 billion. Lagos takes, take, takes about 1.4 billion. You get Benin, I don't say, takes about 900 million. Now, if you are to divide these funds, you see that successfully each state governor or, or each state government will be able to finance a state security operative perfectly. Hmm. Uh, okay, L uh, let me dive into the security votes we're talking about uh, when obasanjo was the president of nigeria during the military uh, his military regime he created this uh, security vote uh, as a fund to console the family of those that were wrong by the military then but now we've seen security vote as a money being paid to states to upkeep their security apparatus and also some other things but rabbi okokwansu said uh, recently that if he emerged as the pr as the president of nigeria he will scrap anything called security vote all because uh some state government are just putting the pocketing this money they are just like funding this money into their own personal account they are not using it for anything you see let's start from the origin of security votes it never started from Olusha it started from yakubu gohan hmm? during the military regime of yakubu gohan yakubu gohan was the one that decided to bring in some small small allocated funds for his then military governors his then military operatives so that they'll be able to resolve you get what i'm saying yeah whatever huh now it left kwan kwaso saying when it comes to you go we scrap i want to ask a question when buhari came into regime 1993 1983 rather he scrapped the issue of security vote. even then he, he arrested a former governor of Kwara state i think uh, Atta Adamu or something, Adamu uh, Atta. Adamu Atta. Yes, he arrested him for about, maybe I think it was about some dollars, some thousand dollars from that he said he misappropriated those security funds. He was arrested and during that period there was nothing called security funds, but he became, an, he became our president now and he's fully in support of security funds. You see, most of these guys are only campaigning and only shouting because they want to become our president. Hmm. Whatever they tell us, I do not believe in them. What I tell my people is when we vote, let us vote. After voting, whatever, whatever, when, when they are begging for your vote, they, they wear this shipping, this ship's clothing. But by the time they become your leaders, they are, they, they are goats. So why do we tend to kill ourselves because of them? You see, Edwin Clark said something on this issue of security vote. He said, he has asked several, and there is nowhere in the concern of Nigeria that gives room for security votes. Do you know security vote? You cannot ask questions on security vote. Of course. No questions. No questions. You don't ask them how it is being spent. It is at the height of an every corruption. Hmm. Security vote is a situation where bad governors go in a lot of money into their pockets. Mr. Governor comes and says, because the former governor was taking 400 million, now I want to start taking 600 million. 1.4, 1.8, 2 billion naira per month as security vote. vote. For what reasons? And there is still insecurity everywhere. A lot of it. I put this money. Somebody goes home with over 30 billion naira annually as security vote. And most times you will see them pumping this money back into election. All right, uh, we have no more time to, to spend on the show again, but yeah. uh, let me take your reaction on 2023 election. Do, do you think we have security uh, apparatus that we uh, ensure the life of the citizen are safe during the election? May God help us. <laughs> Is that your final answer? Yes, may God help us. Wow. 
May God help, help us. us. If, what is, if he doesn't help us, if he helps us, but to me, I believe there are a lot of things we still need to put in place. Before this is not election. a state election. This is not a good state election. Mm. This is Nigeria election. Yes. Yes, we need to put a lot of things in place. You see, the heat is boiling. And God knows when it will stop boiling. Mm -hmm. So, may God help us. Our security operatives need to go back home, sit down, go back to the round table, put a plan to table, and see how they can resolve. But to me, my answer is I'm not in government. I don't know how prepared they are. But may God help us. May God help our leaders. All right. And God bless Nigeria. Amen. In, in 30 seconds, what is your parting word to our viewers at home? Wow. Parting words is that they should stay safe. Mm. When they get to farm and next men are there, stay safe, go back to your house, sleep until they are no longer in your farm. It is better to stay alive than to be killed. Because when you are killed, you can no longer tell the stories. But stay alive to tell a lot of stories and let the goodness of Nigeria be part of your history. All right, thank you so much, Olumide Obanla. It's a pleasure having you on the show this You're morning. Welcome, thank you very much. All right, and this will be where we'll be drawing the curtain of the show. I am Bidemi Moses, and don't forget his word stay safe. Uh, God bless Nigeria, God bless all of us. Bye.